welcome back to the wood shop. It is make timber 3rd and today we're going to be making something that I promised my wife I would make her a year ago. And when I told her what I was doing today, she was like, thank God. <laughs> so I don't really mention this too often anymore, but if you want to send me a sticker, I'll put it on my CNC. The PO box is listed down in the description of this video and the others as well. So today we're making a propagation station and I think it is a pretty cool, unique design. We are first starting off with some white ash. Yes, the ash has not left the building. It is still here and this is one inch thick. I know that I've been using 48 inch long material a whole lot. Don't worry, I'm just making six of these stations today. And the vectors are pretty cool because you only need one vector and then you can assign it to be the top or the bottom. All that'll make more sense in a second. Just like yesterday and the day before, we are only going to be using one bit. It is going to be a quarter inch down cut bit, the downtown Jenny to be specific. We are running it at 120 inches per minute at a depth of cut of 0.1 inches. So I'll be following the Make Timber tag on Instagram. So if you're making anything this month, go ahead and use hashtag Make Timber. I'm trying to be the person who makes Make Timber a real thing. So the next year people actually are doing stuff for Make Timber. I think that would be very cool. Unfortunately, there's one person that is using the Make Timber tag and it's a makeup tutorial girl but she only has a few posts. So, I equally want Make Timber to be a real thing and don't want to destroy her Make Timber. But, you know, one Make Timber has to win. Oh man. One second. It just snapped off right there. And, uh, it's the only one I've got in the shop too. Well, I uh, remembered yesterday that I hadn't taken the bit out of the collet and I'm about to do a, what, two hour long carb? So I took it out and sawdust just poured out of the collet. Always make sure to check that your collet isn't just slammed with sawdust because what that's going to mean is during this two hour long carb, I could be right in the middle of it and then that bit falls and then ruins the whole thing. And all it takes is 30 seconds of checking if you actually have cleared out the chips or not. That is the biggest weakness of this stupid little router. It works great, other than the fact that it's call it is a uh, no bueno. Well, a few things went wrong. Yeah, I'm just gonna scrap this and act like it never happened. All right, so today we are gonna be making a propagation station and it's an incredibly easy project that I've never once messed up before. Now, I'm just gonna be doing this on a single piece of wood. I'm gonna be cutting out two sections which are gonna be married together using some copper pipe and it's gonna make a very cool project. Now, like I said, I've made this project so many times before that I can just do this in my sleep and my measurements are always correct. Let's jump into it. We are gonna be using double-sided tape and screws, just like with all of our other pod projects. Alright, 16 minutes. Um, you know, that's a good time. I don't think that I'd like to be standing here for two hours or something like that today. Uh, that would be stupid. Just like that, easy as can be, we have cut out our propagation station. Snap. Oh, so satisfying. Tape. Peel. Boom. All right, let's just do a little bit of a test fit. Got our copper pieces, they are nice and snug. And then the top as well will fit right there. And then our test tubes. Son of a... So today we're going to be making a propagation station. I'm super excited about this project. I know my wife has been waiting for it for a long time. It should be a very simple one to do today. Let's jump right in. Just some double-sided tape and screws. That helps things not shift around a whole lot. I'm going to be using tabs on this project. Those tabs are going to help me from going insane. Sound good? Cool. Copper pipe. Perfect. Super glue epoxy, whatever you want to use to attach that. Glass tubes, perfect. All right, let's get to routing this and we'll set it up. So this is one inch copper pipe. 
and I cut this to four inches long. Obviously you can play around with that. This file is specifically made for copper pipe. The outer diameter, of course, is bigger than one inch, so that's why I had a little bit of trouble with this file, making sure that it would fit and everything. But essentially all you have to do is put some epoxy in here, which I'm about to do in a few minutes, and then assemble this like so. I'll have a link for these down in the description. These are 20 millimeters by 150 millimeter uh, little test tubes and these just drop into place. Now you can take cuttings from plants, put them in water in these and put this on your windowsill. That's the whole purpose of this is just to set on a windowsill in the light so that plant clippings can take root. Now some plant clippings do a whole lot better when they are in the dark and that is why I made sure that the tubes were incorporated in this instead of wooden dowels. So you can put this right here, the leaf will still be able to get the light that it needs but the roots will have the darkness that it needs in order to propagate properly. Also another cool thing about this is anything that is stored in small tubes or jars this could be useful for. So if you have a friend that you know enjoys reloading or something like that and wants to show off some of their pellets or their grain or anything like that this would be pretty cool for that as well. So let's go ahead and put this together and it'll be done. So let's go ahead and talk some numbers. So there are a few different things to take into account here. The glass tubes, you can buy these off Amazon. Uh, I think they're like 20 of them for $15. Uh, you might be able to find those cheaper somewhere else, but I'll link the ones, these exact ones that I bought on Amazon down below in the description. Now the copper pipe, that is fairly expensive as well. The wood is by far the least expensive portion of this. And then it took 16 minutes for it to cut out all the way. So for a dollar a minute, that's $16 just on this. Stay with me. Let's just say that they're 75 cents a piece. This holds seven of them. So what is seven times 75? $5.25. So 5.25 plus the 16 that it took to cut it out. Well, I'll just knock that down to $5. That is $21 that we're up to. Now, copper? is very expensive. I got a 10 foot pipe of copper because a two foot pipe was like $30. And then the 10 foot pipe was on sale, thankfully, for like $50. Um, so these are four inch pieces. So out of the 120 inches divided by four, you can get 30 pieces. And then the price of $50 divided by 30 pieces is $1.66 each. Dollar sixty-six times two is three thirty-three. So let's just go ahead and call that three dollars. We are now at twenty-four dollars right here that we need to charge to cover our butts. I might bring one or two of these to the artisan market and just put a price tag of thirty dollars on it just to see if it will sell. Uh, I know that this is what my wife wanted, so that's kind of what I made the project for. I think this is a perfect gift but I'm very interested to see what it really will sell for. Hint for the next project, I don't know his name, but the guy with the meme. That's, that's the hint right there. A huge thank you to the supporters of Make Timber. That's Huntington Builds, Rowdy Roman, Cadence Manufacturing, Myers Woodshop, and Linfinity CNC Machines. Thank y'all very much. I really appreciate it. They're going to give away a ton of really awesome stuff at the very end of this month, October 1st. That's a Saturday. Mark it on your calendar. There's literally so much stuff that I'm going to give away. 